Okay, folks, so this is Windows 8. Uh, this is the desktop I'm currently on right now. And as you can see, I'm installing Microsoft Office Professional Plus 2013, and this is a preview release. And a lot of people ask me early on, Jack, how do you get all these preview releases and how do you get all this stuff? Just become a member of TechNet. If you become a member of Microsoft TechNet, uh, I think it's like three to about 300 bucks a year or something like that. It gives you access to all their software as they're developing it. Uh, so you can get early, view, early reviews and uh, or an early peek at things. And that's actually where I downloaded the Windows 8. Um, this is the Windows 8 Developer Edition. So, I mean, it's out to the developers. It's the full edition. It's what's going to be released. Uh, and I already have it running on here so we can have a look at it and start playing around a little bit with it to kind of get used to it. Now, early on, I can tell you that Windows 8 is actually... Um, going to take a little bit of getting used to they changed a ton of stuff just playing around with it for a few uh like maybe an hour already today there's a lot of menus changed a lot of the uh windows have changed uh definitely how you get back to your start screen has changed uh there's no longer a start button so in many many ways they made it look and feel kind of like an ipad so that's just something i wanted to throw out there to you um and if you notice, these videos I'm creating right now are kind of Windows clips or, or kind of video clips, let's say. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I'm doing that is because as I come across new things with Windows 8, um, I'm putting that video together. So I want you to see these pieces and learn a little bit more about Windows 8 and what it is and what it does. I'm having a ton of trouble just doing little things like getting my pictures to be seen. But I am running this in a virtual machine. And if you don't really know what that means, it's not a big deal. So don't really worry about the, what a virtual machine is. So anyway, the uh, Microsoft Office Professional Plus preview is installed. Let's click close here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add these uh, shortcuts to our desktop. Let me show you that because this is very interesting. First thing you do is go down here to the left and just kind of hover your mouse over. There's no button. But if you kind of hover it towards the corner there, what you're waiting for is a little Windows uh, like start button to come up. And I don't know why they can't just like put it over there. Because it's not wanting to come up. It's really, really crazy how they did this. And as you can see, it doesn't want to come up there. So There you go. So you see that little start button? It's right in the corner. So you get your mouse down here in the corner and you click. This is actually your start screen or your start menu. Um, and we, <laughs> we as technologists have fought for years to get people not to put a bunch of crap on your desktop, a bunch of shortcuts and all over your desktop. And what does Microsoft do now? They throw a bunch of these uh, shortcuts basically over our desktop. But you can see there it did a really nice job because I just installed Microsoft Office. And you see here where it gave me all the uh, icons right on my desktop top is kind of what I call it, more than a start menu but look at the top left it's called the start button so this is the start screen and as you build this up it actually sweeps like panes back and forth and the reason that works that way is because I guess the big success with the iPad sweeping back and forth and I'm trying not to make accusations based on Microsoft and Apple and I think that's a bunch of crap I think what it is, is all companies build off the success of another company. And if something's successful, then why wouldn't you go ahead and create something uh, that functions the same way or the same basic principles because the other company is, is making great success from it. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's really good old time competition is what I think it is. So here we have our basic start menu, right? It's not really a desktop because you can go to the desktop. You can see here where you can actually click right over here on this little flower you can change these to the desktop let me show you a couple of things that are really cool though um, now let me get back to that we'll get back to that in a minute uh, and I'll show you some stuff around here a little bit and, and how things really work but what I'm going to show you now is um, well let's go ahead I'm going to show you the weather so all you got to do is come on these uh, for lack of better terms, I guess icons. They call this, the, well, they were calling it the Metro Interface, but they got sued for using that name. So now it's just called the Interface, I guess. 
But let's click on this uh, 71 Pittsburgh and Cloudy. The weather is really, really amazing. I'll give them that. This weather pane is beautiful. And the weather pane is really beautiful in that, look here, it gives me all the times of the day, and it gives me the thunderstorms, different temperatures coming down here, partly cloudy, da, 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 whatever. And as you can see here, I'm just swooping my mouse back and forth. I'm just like going right across the top of the mouse here. So you can use your trackball or your trackpad or whatever you have there and just move back and forth. It also gives me these weather alerts up here, satellite, nationwide satellite. You can see all that stuff there, temperature region. And what's really weird about this, if you right click on here at any time, you can go to places, which I only have one. You can add different places. Let's right click again. You can go to world weather. And it gives you some kind of pointers in the what now you have to be hooked to the internet to do this because naturally it's pulling it from the internet, but it's really, really cool and way that this is actually pulling these maps up. All right, let's go back. Let's go back home. And this is basically your home screen. Now to get out of here, it was really interesting because again, go back down to the corner and you see your little start button comes back up there and click and you're back on your start screen as or start landing page or whatever you want to call this. Now, the place I was having trouble with, that I told you earlier, is the photos. If I click on here, it says that there's no photos in your library, but there is. I'm going to go back, and I'll go into Computer. And this is the new My Computer or Computer Interface, whatever you want to talk about. There's a control panel in here, so you can get right to the control panel at any time. But if I go in here and I go into my library, even if so, if I go into Pictures... I put a bunch of pictures in here, but they're not showing up. I keep getting this message. Some library features are unavailable due to unsupported library locations. You click help and it really doesn't tell you anything. It just says, yeah, sometimes that happens. So that kind of crappy. I hope they do get that fixed soon to let us know what's going on. Now, even if I say, well, maybe this isn't my library location. So I went into the C drive users and I went into my name and I went to uh, my pictures folder here and I put them in there and still not doing anything so let's go back we're going to documents nothing in documents um, and see what I mean there's no other place I can see where there would be pictures at except right there so I don't know it doesn't make much sense to me okay what we also wanted to talk about a little bit was how they changed the computer or my computer, whatever you want to refer to it as, how they change the look and how it's almost like, like I call it like office-like. Now, what do I mean by office-like? What I mean by there's just so much you can do with the almost like a ribbon style bar at the top that they put on here. So that's what I'm saying, folks. They changed a lot of the UI or the user interface that you're going to have to get used to and have the people in your office become more familiar with. So we're going to open up, let's just say file. If we click on this now in the little file box up here, just like you have in Office, you can see where you got uh, delete history. If you've deleted anything, now it makes a history so you can kind of go back in time. Uh, help and close. Open a new window or open a new window in a new process. Now, that's just a couple things they have there. They got things like if you click on here now and click on properties is where we would go ahead and get the size of the disk that we have available, uh, the tools, you know, where you can do your check disk, your defragmentation, hardware, where we tell you the different drives and everything in there. Security, where you can actually uh, look at the security policies that you have set up and the disk quota in case you want to set up a disk quota. If you're going to do that, and uh, this is, look, well, every, we have everybody looking at this right now, Windows 8 here, but uh, if your system's admin, I would suggest you do that quota on your server, not here. Cancel that. Now, if you right-click on top of your C drive, you can still get the properties that way. It's the same way, same properties. You can also get to things like turn on BitLocker. If you've never used BitLocker before, you probably never use it in Windows 8 either, so don't really worry about that. And you can get everything else in here. Share with, um, format it. You can actually format that drive. Let's open up the drive, and we're going to go to our users files. 
in here. So we're in here with our pictures. Different, we have pictures in here that I put in here earlier. And you could do things up here. It changes to a ribbon bar, just like we had in Microsoft Office. I mean, it's crazy. Such as we could take a picture that we have here. Whichever one we might want to use. And you can simply click set as background. And it now puts it on your background as your wallpaper. You can do a slideshow. You can do little things like tilt it right and left. We can go to view. We can view different size icons, large icons, medium icons, everything we had before. We can sort by. If you want to sort by, again, stuff we had before. Group by, we had that before. It was just a little bit more hidden. Good large icons. I really don't like that desktop wallpaper I have on there right now. So just click here and we'll go back to uh, view or manage. Set this background. We'll just use that picture as a background. You get the sharing pane where you can share it with specified people. So you can just click there and actually share those files out. Whoever you might want to share that with. Burn it to a disk. You can now print your pictures right here out of the uh, my computer. Or you can fax it if you have internet faxing capabilities. The built-in zipping utility is really nice. So let's go back to view medium icons. Let's say we take these three here. We click on share and zip. It's going to actually take those four pictures and make our little zip file here. Right there. So it's very easy to compress. Then you click on that zip file. You can take it and burn it to disk or fax it, which I don't know how you would do that. We can look at some advanced security features. And again, that's just basically setting permissions. So you wouldn't have to worry too much about that. Go back to the home button is where you can create new folders, uh, new items, such as a text document, easy access, map and drive. You can get easy access right from here, which is pretty cool. So again, folks, it's nothing that we can't do though. If we just right click here, we can do everything from here. Also new text document folder, whatever we want to create. So. So it is there, but they're making it more and more like ribbon like, I, I would say. So if you hear me say that often, and I probably can't stress that enough that it is more ribbon like. Close this. Now let's say we're here and let me just look here to see. I don't see the control panel on here, but I know I'd like to have my control panel on my uh, start button here. So if I right click. You can go down here into all apps and just left click on that. And then here's all the applications on the computer. Now, a lot of this is, as I said, this is a virtual machine. So I'm running this on top of my Mac. But these are all the actual built in uh, programs also for the computer. And what we're looking for is control panel. So if you see it, just click on it. It would open up the control panel. But let's go back because what we want to do is we want to right click all apps and we want to take that control panel right click on it so it checks it and then we want to pin it to the start button now we go back you can now see that the control panel is here we can move that very easily by moving it up just dragging it and you may want to do that just like if you want to rearrange some other stuff, like all this office stuff I loaded here. Let's say we wanted to rearrange this a little bit. Well, how would we do that? Well, it's not that hard. Let's pull it over here. We're going to make a new row starting over here. So we'll put these in the order that I normally use those. Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint would be my next one I, I like to use a lot. Publisher uh, would probably be another one. OneNote. Uh, I've never really used that much. Access. Uh, link. And Outlook. And InfoPath Designer. And then InfoPath Filer. 
So that's just how easy it is to make another group. Pretty simple to do. And this here could be actually the group for uh, icons or whatever uh, buttons that you would normally use to run your computer. When you click on control panel, it's all single click, you have the same basic look and feel. If I click on small icons like I like it, or large icons, you can see that you have basically the same stuff in there we've always had. So Microsoft has done a ton of work to change the UI. They changed the UI interface. And then they did a ton of dissatisfaction because they left a lot of the underlying stuff exactly the way it was. So uh, it's not a bad thing. I think it looks nice and everything seems to work well. Um, it's moving a lot better than what the, um, the pre-releases did or the release candidates. They were really sluggish and really bad. Uh, this thing's actually moving along really well and I've uh, been uh, really, really um, pleased with it so far. Once you get over a couple of those little quirks. Let's close that. Go back here. We're going to right click and go back to our all apps. And again, you're going to look in here and see if there's anything else in here you may want to pull over uh, to the actual start screen. I guess we could call that the start screen and let's say maybe you want to have Windows Media Player on there so you can just click on that and WordPad click on here click on there uh, one click you're gonna add that one let's do WordPad I'm gonna add that one and Windows PowerShell let's say we're gonna add that one okay so once we add those, you can see they add them over here. So we're just going to pull them back over here, right here, and right there. So now we have the uh, WordPad and stuff over here that we may want to be able to use. So that's just a really, really quick rundown and a quick look uh, so far of Windows 8. That kind of gives you a uh, quick preview, let's say, of uh, Windows 8 and how it looks and uh, some of the functionality of it. And as I dig more and more into this, we'll show you some more. I am going to be doing some follow-up videos here that you're uh, going to see pretty soon, uh, either today or tomorrow, of uh, some of the Microsoft Office 2013. That is a uh, like a release uh, candidate, but uh, it's pretty much done to the point of what they're going to do to it, I think. So... We'll talk about that then. So until next time, hey, keep learning. Don't ever stop because once you stop learning, it's going to stop your forward progress of your life. And then what's left but the end, right? It's kind of dismal, but it's true. Okay, thanks again for watching uh, this episode of Jack's Tech Corner and a short intro to Windows 8. And please subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel. And you too will be able to follow along and learn even more about Windows 8 and everything else that I have to teach you here. So I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.